What, are you expecting me to say something? It's Super Mario 64, what can I say that hasn't really already been said? Like, seriously, this game has been reviewed, analyzed, practically talked about to death inside and out. It's hard not to talk about anything revolving around Mario 64 without sounding like a broken record. The game's been out for decades now, and yet people are still talking about the revolutionary jump Mario took back in 1996. To be fair, it's hard not to talk about it. It's pretty groundbreaking in a lot of areas, and I'm not talking about the type you see in Womp's Fortress. There's lots of things to dissect, but today, I wanted to narrow down the topics and pinpoint one specific area that's one of Mario 64's biggest strengths. And I think the Sugar Hill Gang says it best, so hit it! I said a hip hop, you don't stop the rocket. Movement. The act of moving around is one of the most vital pieces to a 3D platformer. If you can make the sole action of running around a 3D area the main source of enjoyment, that kind of just trumps everything else in my personal opinion. Okay, obviously the levels have to be designed in a way to complement said moveset, and I get that not all 3D platformers are all about hopping and skipping and yahooing all over the place, but there's just something about movement-focused 3D platformers. They are my bread and butter. There's a reason I 100% every 3D Mario that I lay my eyes on. Except for like this, this one, this one's just kind of weird. Super Mario 64 is known for a lot of things, but it's the movement for me. And judging by speedrun.com, I'm not alone with this opinion. If you were hoping for a development backstory, game review type deal, you, uh, you might be in the wrong place because it's all about the movement today, baby. Let's take a deep dive into Mario 64's moveset and mobile design. Better buckle up because we're taking a trip to Shmoove City. Before we start talking about long jumps and wall kicks, I think it's important to address a common problem many people face with this bad boy. This game is old. Yeah, I love Mario 64 as much as the next guy does, but I can't ignore the fact that this game has its aged qualities. For starters, the movement engine itself can kind of feel a bit janky and very punishing if you don't really know how it works. It's all momentum based. Some moves require certain speeds like the jump kick versus dive. Others require specific timing like wall kicks. Compared to what we have now in the modern day era, I wouldn't say this is the most beginner friendly platformer. The physics can feel very weird as well. There's not a ton of indication on which slopes can be walked on or not, and in some cases, it can be very frustrating. When it comes to the precise aspects of a platformer, Mario 64 doesn't really give that much wiggle room for error. The game's momentum can kind of be hard to handle near ledges and short platforms, leading to lots of falls and deaths. There is ledge grabbing, but that's also pretty janky at times and isn't always the most reliable. But honestly, when you boil down all the problems, I think most issues stem from this trident Nintendo called a controller. Now, personally, I don't mind the N64 controller, but I will admit the joystick can be a big problem, especially if the joystick is used and wobbly. A lot of people have trouble performing certain actions or making precise movements, and I can understand that, but luckily with living in the present day, there's lots of alternatives to choose from. Personally, I use the Retro Bit Hori Pad Replica. The shape is a lot more modern and the button placement makes it way more comfortable to me personally, but more notably, the joystick is bigger, snappy, grippy, and resembles a stick more like the GameCubes. Just these changes alone resolve some of the game's issues and helps out with inputs immensely. It's certainly not the only option out there, but it's definitely one of my top picks. What I'm trying to say is this game is old, and there are things about it that don't sit well with a lot of people. It's not for everyone. But if you do take the time to learn how this game operates, learn how to use each move effectively and how the physics feel and work, there's a sense of satisfaction and mastery that's really hard to top, and I guarantee you won't regret it. It may not be for everyone, but I would say once you develop your skill set enough, Mario 64 is one of the most fun games to control. It's obvious that movement was a huge focus when making Mario 64, and Shigeru Miyamoto even stated in a developer interview, One of our big development themes was letting the players move Mario around any way they wanted. We wanted to make a game where just moving Mario around was fun. I don't think movement was just one priority throughout the development. 
I think it was the biggest priority, and you'll quickly realize that within the first few moments of the game, when you burst out of this pipe into the castle's front yard and start messing around. Yeah, so the front yard, it's a good, uh, it's, uh... Do I really have to do this? Okay, for real though, it was very smart of Nintendo to have you start in this open yard right outside the castle. For a lot of people back in the 90s, this was their first introduction to a 3D space, you know, being introduced to rotating a joystick, controlling a player's camera, getting used to the physics. This was a perfect example of the concept teaching without telling, and was a great way to both naturally and subtly train the player into using Mario's moveset. With this big open area, it gives you the perfect opportunity to get familiar with the movement, but on top of that, it teaches you all about the terrain physics, swimming, wall kicks, pretty much all the essentials you'll need to know. And if that's not enough evidence about this game's focus on movement, just take a look at the manual. Good gravy look at all these moves. When it comes to movement options, this manual is more stuff than me on Thanksgiving. But okay, uh, what all do we have here? I mean, they don't call him the Jump Man for nothing, so of course you got Mario's claim to fame, the standard jump. But with a consecutive input upon landing, you can perform a double jump for extra height. Throw in some forward momentum and another consecutive input, and you have the triple jump. These are the three pillars of Mario 64's moveset. The standard jump and double jump are pretty much used for everything involving platforming, but the triple jump gives you the most height and is one of those more advanced moves that help you get to those hard to reach places. It's also one of the most satisfying things you'll ever do in a 3D platformer with the rhythm and the animation and oh, it just feels amazing. Next is the backflip. Crouch down and jump to perform a high backward somersault. This can give some good stationary height in those tight spots. It doesn't happen all the time, but when needed, it's much appreciated. You also have the side flip, where if you jump while Mario is making a U-turn, you can sideways somersault. This also gives a decent amount of height and can be used in those smaller areas where triple jumps aren't possible. It's also used for a seamless way of reorienting yourself for better platforming angles. While this move is pretty versatile for the most part, I think it's best complemented with the wall kick. The wall kick, or wall jump, is pretty self-explanatory. It's an advanced move that uses walls to your advantage to gain height or pull off some crazy stunts. Depending on the level, they can even be used repeatedly to scale up certain high sections of a course. But unlike most modern 3D platformers where wall jumps have a sliding function that make them easier to pull off, Mario 64's wall jumps have a specific timing that makes them a lot more complex compared to most moves in Mario's bag of tricks. It may be more difficult to perform Form, but it's one of the most useful moves in the game, and personally, one of my favorites. Next we have the Jump Kick. Now originally it was designed as a way of attacking, but nowadays it's more used for mobile purposes. When performing one, you actually gain a little more hang time, almost like you get a tiny gust of air. This is useful for multiple reasons, like negating fall damage or giving you just a little more air time for clearing gaps, being a quick consistent setup for triple jumps, or in some cases it's very useful for making precise adjustments to your position. It also has this weird property of climbing up slopes that usually aren't meant to be climbed. Uh, from what I understand, this is because of the height it gives plus how quick the action is, but to be quite honest, I really don't know. If you're into the Olympics, you might be a fan of this one, the long jump. This is mainly used for clearing longer gaps, but it's also a great way to pick up speed. There's uh, really nothing else to say about it. Uh, yep, nothing, nothing really. Oh, I, I guess it can be used to send Mario at lightning fast speeds when long jumping backwards on certain surfaces such as staircases. Cause why not? Another forward movement option is the dive. Running at top speed and pressing the B button causes Mario to leap forward. And it can also be combined with a jump to create a jump dive. This is the fastest way of travel. Jump diving repeatedly can quickly build up speed, and it's one of those moves that you'll be using for a majority of the game. But with it being one of the more useful tools, it can also be one of the more punishing or riskier moves that has a little learning curve. For one, you can't cancel the momentum it causes, and so it becomes a lot more riskier in certain situations because you don't always guarantee a safe landing. You also have to land on a flat surface in order to roll out of it, which means you can't ledge grab or else you'll bonk and most likely fall to your death. Yeah, you might get some extra distance on your jump, but as for landing that jump dive, it isn't as simple as, say, a double jump would be. So it sort of has this risk slash reward aspect to it, but once you get the hang of it, you really can't go without it. 
And the last move, but certainly not the least, is the slide kick. Now, the slide kick is very situational. It doesn't have the most practical uses. I mean, it is an optimal way of attacking enemies while maintaining speed, but the only other use it has is its unique property of bouncing off hazards like lava or quicksand. Now, that may seem pretty useful at first, but honestly, most of those issues can be solved with just long jumping over those hazards. Although the slide kick's uses are rare, it's still one of my favorite moves in the game just because of how smooth it looks. Like, dude, this man is looking like he'll be sliding in your DMs here soon. Good grief is it so silky smooth. And that, my friends, is Mario's moveset. For being Mario's first introduction to the 3D world, I'm pretty impressed with the size of the toolbox you get to utilize, and I didn't even cover everything. I can't imagine what it would be like in Mario's shoes. That would be crazy. <laughs> oh great, now look what you did. What is happening? Dude, how am I supposed to know? You're the one who did this. What did I do? I just said it would be crazy. I didn't think it would actually happen. Gosh, what is up with my hair? It feels like I washed it with Gorilla Glue. It's like a freaking helmet. Well, to be fair, it's always like that, minus the Gorilla Glue. But okay, this whole shirt thing is kind of getting out of hand. Hey, but people weren't kidding. This yard is pretty nice. When we talk about Mario's movement, I think it's also important to establish the worlds you run around in, but really more specifically talk about the rules the game sets, because there aren't any. Your goal is to collect stars and beat Bowser. That is it. It doesn't matter how you get them or which order you get them in, it's all your choice. Want to triple jump off this archway and fly over this cage to a star? Sure. Want to do shocking arrow lifts the way God intended? Be my guest. This creates a huge sense of freedom where the player gets full access to his moveset and doesn't have to worry about any restrictions or linear routes to your main objective. In most cases, when you see a star, it's not about following a strict path to it. Rather, the game gives you a few tricks up your sleeve to go about collecting any star in any way you want, whether it's more optimal or just a more stylish way of doing it. Collecting the stars is one thing, but even when getting from point A to point B, this quote unquote no rules design still applies. Womp's Fortress is a perfect example of a level that has multiple linear pathways that all lead to the same place, but you aren't restricted to them in any way. Yes, you could follow this pathway and cross the falling bridge, make your way around the fortress to this elevator, and uh, Or you could triple jump wall kick dive off this wall onto a floating island and long jump up to the same location. And that's just one example. Now, there are specific requirements and ways to get specific stars, but with this mobile freedom design, there's tons of cases where you can completely bypass certain obstacles or ways the game intended for you to go. If you haven't bypassed this section in Wet Dry World, you're a complete liar and everyone else knows it. Some may look at this as game breaking, but I really don't think it takes away from the core platforming experience. If anything, I think it enhances it. But whether this design was intentional or not, it creates this extremely addicting gameplay loop that makes mastering this game's movement all the more rewarding and satisfying. With the moveset being as diverse as it is, it creates countless platforming situations where there's no single answer. But I think it's also very important to make that moveset feel fluid in solving those situations. And luckily, Mario 64 does not disappoint in this department. Almost every single move in this game flows and chains together so seamlessly. You can jump kick into a triple jump dive, long jump into a wall kick, side flip, double jump, wall kick, dive. Everything flows together so well, it's crazy. I think another reason the game feels so smooth has to do with the fact that it's all about momentum. And I know some people prefer snap your movement in a platformer, but when your movement is all about building and keeping momentum, it really enhances the fluid feeling of moving around. Because every move has a way of transitioning itself to one another, it never feels like you abruptly stop. While most modern 3D platformers have ways of simply canceling your forward momentum with, say, a double jump, Mario 64 doesn't really have that and instead encourages and challenges the player to master the game's movement and physics in a way that feels self-sufficient and rewarding. The jump dive is perfect for getting around fast because it doesn't kill your momentum at all, but it is one of the more riskier moves to do. However, if you can master that move and learn to use it effectively, it becomes incredibly satisfying to pull off some of the stunts you can do with it. And that goes for really every move in the game. 
It really shows that Nintendo poured their heart and soul into making their 3D debut feel incredible. And because of their determination and execution, they managed to create something beyond special, something that to this day is still being refined and mastered, and something that is incredibly addicting and enjoyable. Which is why I think Mario 64 has thousands of ROM hacks to choose from, and why Mario 64 is like the top speedrunning game to play, because at its core, it's just so fun to move around. Super Mario 64 is known for a lot of things, but the movement is what sets itself apart from the rest, and I truly believe that Mario 64 wouldn't be nearly as relevant as it is today if it wasn't so rewarding, satisfying, and fun to control. To me, Mario 64 is one of the most fun games to play even after being out for as long as it has. And it may be revolutionary in many different ways, but to me, the movement is what makes it one of my favorite games of all time. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed this video in any way, just liking, sharing, subscribing is a great way to support me. So uh, I just want to say thanks and I'll catch you later. So is uh, anyone gonna help or am I just kinda stuck here?